I'm John Sullins, uh, filming's Keith Rice. We're here in uh, Alabama at a place I call um, Sherwood Forest. I've got about 15 acres or so here that we've set up a uh, traditional um, 3D archery range. Uh, I've been shooting uh, my bow since 1958 or so, and for a long, long time I've always wanted to have my own 3D range. I've got uh, approximately 56 targets here that we'll show you. Uh, for the sake of saving time and not making the video too long, we won't show you all 56 shots, but um, uh, we'll show you some of them. We'll shoot a few of them with a lighted knock so you can see the arrow fly, which is kind of cool. Uh, I found the lighted knock don't fly exactly the same. That's why we're not going to shoot it at every target. Um, uh, the course is set up in... Um, it's a pine thicket where they cut all the trees down, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, and the trees are coming back, and uh, I've got a, a permission to set this tar this course up here. But it's set up, if you'd imagine, a um, football field and a running track around the field. The course would be the running track that you could go clockwise or counterclockwise, and the targets are set up one after the other in the big loop, uh, shooting this way, um, uh, I call it the white course because I've got white markers on the ground. It's a place that I try to shoot from if I'm trying to keep a score to work on my uh, my accuracy and so on. Uh, and if you shoot the counterclockwise, uh, you sh I shoot at the yellow stakes and I shoot at the opposite side of the target. So you're shooting the same target from both sides depending on which course you're shooting. And some, cor some of the targets are um, uh, set up so you shoot whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise course, you shoot the target from the same spot, and I've got orange stakes for that. Um, the ranges, you know, we've got some targets set up really close because that's the way 3D tournaments set them up. I hate shooting close shots, but if you don't practice, you don't get good at them. And uh, the targets are, uh, I've got bear targets, elk, you know, the standard deer and all that, uh, all those sort of targets, but we've also got a lot of targets that were, um, uh, a, a club was just throwing away a bunch of the old deer inserts and we've taken those deer inserts that would normally be you know like a football this way and we stand them up instead of shooting at the ends like you would on a normal deer you're shooting at the side so you can make a lot better use uh, make the, the inserts last a lot longer and you get a free target some of the uh, older targets we had that were shot up so bad I couldn't fix uh, like the hip of a deer bedded deer we carved into the shape of a beaver so uh, some pretty neat, neat, neat targets. Not all of them are new, but it's uh, not all that expensive to do it this way either. A lot of them have been repaired with a foam, expanding foam, and uh, we'll show you some of those. So we'll start off shooting the white course going this way without the lighted knocks. And we, uh, I'll shoot a lighted knock on the first target just so you can see what it looks like because they're kind of neat. And then we'll shoot the standard arrows too. So. I found these light and knocks shoot a little bit higher and they're not quite as accurate for uh, I'm, I'm a gap shooter and a string walker and, um, uh, and when you got an arrow that shoots higher that, that kind of affects things but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. This is a Sunday morning, and um, I think it's the 6th of January, and uh, it's probably 50, almost 50 degrees already. Uh, got nice weather, sunshine. It's been raining off and on for, <laughs> seems like six months, but mm -hmm. we finally got some decent sun. We'll try the light of knock again here.
this target's just uh, a layers of uh, some mats, rubber mats that I found a place sells them for a dollar a piece, and uh, I've got several of those out here. So. We'll shoot the non-lighted knock here. Walking around this course, it's, I'm guessing it's about a half mile to make a whole loop. For the sake of saving time, for the sake of saving time, plus how bright the sun is, there's a target right there that would shoot from either direction from the orange stake. It's a little thing on the ground. If you can see the white uh, chest on it, it's got two eyes above that horizontal log. Yeah. So, but we'll skip shooting at that one for now. Oops, let me back up there. It's got a little pig target. That uh, target's one I got from Big Jim. Uh, if you go to a lot of 3D events, you probably know Big Jim. Uh, he bought that company. You originally was Sipsy River. He got it from me, and um, he's taken it to another level. If you need good targets, that would be a good place to look. There's another one of my little inserts there. You can see it standing up and down. It's uh, brown center with gray. Uh, and, uh, again, I shoot those to get practice for close shots, but if we took time to shoot them now, their video would be way too long. So. Fun. Let's take a real long shot with a lighted arrow at this cougar because it's out there pretty far. It's a little over 30, I'm guessing, 35 yards. We'll see what we can do with it. A little high. As I said earlier, I'm 70 years old, got bad shoulders, I've had shoulder surgery, so I'm shooting, um, only shooting 30 pounds because I don't hunt anymore. Uh, it's a Hoyt uh, XL riser, which is not made anymore. I like it because it's lightweight. Again, it's easy on my shoulders. Set of uh, Uccas out of France, they're uh, VX1000 limbs. I wish I could shoot more poundage, but I just can't take a chance. I have to get cut on again. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
one of my target oh there it is over there <laughs> no that's not it it's over here here it is <laughs> mm -hmm. i can't even remember where they all are oh, you see yeah. it kind of behind that tree between the orange stakes again I, if we're going to a tournament right now it's early january no tournaments for a couple months i really work on shooting those close ones Try the lighted one again just to see if I can not shoot high. This is the one I think that's between the trees back there. Can't see it with the sun. I've, when I've repaired these targets, like this one, you have if you've got targets that sometimes you just can't keep them together because they're wore out. And I've, I've repaired a lot of these. I put a piece of uh, wire strapping across the top and long screws in it, you know, to hold it together. And uh, like you can see where this one has been shot up so bad, I cut out all the old foam and covered it with plastic. You've probably seen YouTube videos and you fill it with the uh, expanding foam. But one thing I do extra is I take a uh, tube of silicone sealer like liquid rubber sort of and I just spread it all over you know like squeezing out a tube of toothpaste and then I take a, um, a smooth edge and smooth it all out and then it puts a thin layer of skin on it that helps keep the water out and it makes it look a lot better than the you know having thousands of holes in it and um, I have to redo it once a year depending on how much we shoot it so Try the lighted knock again. It's a bear target. I'm not knocking these lighted, the lighted knocks. They just shoot a little higher for some reason, and uh, it causes me to do a little guessing. I'm assuming that the weight of these lighted knocks and the battery is changing the spine of the arrow, and um, yeah, and it just they just don't fly quite the same. And I'm not knocking uh, again, not knocking the lighted knocks. You just have to practice with them. We've only been shooting these things a little bit yesterday and today, so. We're walking past more of these little small targets. There's one to your right there, Keith, against the tree. It's just an insert turned on, a so on its side, connected to a board.
tried to set these I've tried to set these little targets. There's one up there back in the brush. We go up to the Kentucky Trad Fest every year and they uh, have a, a round called the smoke around and uh, you shoot with just one arrow and if your arrow breaks or you lose it, you know, it's done. And it's a tremendous amount of fun and that's why uh, I've got a whole series of these little targets set back in this brush for that. Again, I'm not going to shoot them now because it, it just takes too long. And uh, But you got to shoot through the V's of the trees, through branches, and uh, uh, it makes you concentrate. It's a lot of fun. target here it may be 23 or so 25 I don't think it's 25 but can you see it you all right yeah I think. Weren't uh, you? I may have forgot to pull up when I changed the course, but we'll shoot it again. Okay. I change these targets around from time to time just to avoid any boredom. Sometimes I leave a stake in the ground where the shoes to shoot the target from. So, and I maybe should have put an orange one here. I don't remember, but we'll shoot it here again. It's closer this time. It's a little over 20. See it. I don't even see it. Over here. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see in that. In sun. That sun, yeah. It's like the first shot was just a tiny bit low. Long shot uh, with a lighted arrow. This is going to be, I'm guessing, 30. It's a big hog. Probably a little past 30. This one you, we have to shoot, you can barely see it, the diagonal limbs across there, it's underneath them. You'll have to almost get on your knee to shoot it. And... place is really peaceful 
uh, it's right on the edge of a lake in the summertime. It gets kind of noisy with people running their jet skis, but other than that, it's dead quiet out here most of the time. Got a bedded deer, about 20 yards, so. We see a lot of deer in here. They bed down in here, and uh, well, we've seen hawks and foxes and and so on. Uh, I've had my this, like I said, this is the first week of January. The rut basically is at the end of the rut in Alabama, but I've had two or three targets attacked in the last three weeks or so. Where the the one case, I think it's this next deer. The it actually bent the rebar and one it knocked the head off of it and. Uh, poke some holes in its hips and things so uh, there are a few bucks out here that don't like my targets. <laughs> Here's a nice shot Pete. We'll try to light a knock with this long one. This one's out there. I don't know how far it is. Pretty far. Hit in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not as far as I thought. <laughs> That's the difference between those. why those things shoot high, we don't know. Hmm. Where's the, let's shoot one from the stake. Where's the stake? Back here. Okay, let me try to simulate uh, what happens at the 3D tar events. We shot events from Nebraska to Indiana to North Carolina. And love shooting the 3Ds. <coughs> Have a little javelina. Skip again, we're walking past a bunch of short ones that we've got set back up in this brush. This one here, Keith, is just one of might show it's got enough shade.
It's back there someplace. I can see the <laughs> ribbon knocked down, but I don't see the yeah. target. The target's knocked over. Yeah. Something will knock the target over. Yeah. little ones back there behind you. You're standing right on the stake. One's got a head on it. Mm -hmm. A face. I've got bad knees. I've had three knee replacements. I've got chairs sc scattered around here so if I come out and get tired and sit down I've got rake hooks and things to help in case my friends lose their arrows. I never lose one. I don't ever miss. Usually it's Keith or Jim. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Truth hurts. <laughs> Armadillo's been in here. Look at all this. That's it. Well, I've covered up my my uh, marker. It's in here somewhere, but we'll shoot from back here. Oh, here it is, right here. Probably 20, 20 yards, maybe. Got some. I've got circles on these targets and a, and a lot of them because they've been shot up by the actual eight and ten ring have been obliterated so I just make a circle that's larger than a ten and smaller than the eight that way when I when I come out and practice I can I count how many times I'm not in there um, it's easier than having a pencil and paper and trying to keep score with eight ten five and so on so I just see that you know if I miss I've got to miss if I the best I've done on all targets, I think I got through the course with five, only five outside when I was concentrating, concentrating very well. But uh, but that's why we've got the rings instead of the kills on the actual normal kill zone. Some of these targets have been patched and repaired multiple times, and then the kill zone just it goes away. an example of come up here Keith and you can show how we'd shoot the opposite if we're shooting from the yellow stake going counterclockwise we'd shoot we'd be walking that direction you know and there's you know we'd shoot the back side of this deer right here and um, and then just go you know, around and just basically if I shot the whole thing clockwise and counterclockwise there's well over a hundred targets mm -hmm.
This is a, uh, an elk target. It was old. The legs were broke. We had cut the legs off, made it a bedded elk. And the only horns we had we got from a club are off of a caribou. So it's a caribou horns on a elk. <laughs> It's, I think it's about 30. I measured this one with the rangefinder once when we set it up. I think it was 33 yards, but I'm not. I'm not sure. This is another one of the targets that kept falling apart, so I put the strap steel across the top with the holes and some screws in it. It really helps hold your targets together. You can see the <laughs> improper horns. Another one of my rakes that I leave out here for my friends when they lose arrows. <laughs> I'm going to shoot this with the, my normal arrow and then I'll shoot one with the lighted because it'll look good on this target. I'll aim lower with this lighted knock. We'll see what we can do with it. I aimed there. I, I don't know why this does this, why it would shoot high, but I aimed about four um, uh, yards as if it was four yards uh, further difference between the regular knock and the one with the battery in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has to do something with the spine. But uh, the, the point being, if you're going to shoot light and knocks when you hunt, you better shoot them and get used to them. I, I, I wouldn't have believed this if I hadn't seen it myself. You know, when I say it was four yards difference, uh, that you got to remember I'm only shooting 30 pounds, so this bow doesn't have a lot of uh, cast to it. Uh, the arrows are not extremely light. Um, I think I'm shooting. Uh, these are 285 grains, so I'm, I'm close to I'm about nine grains per pound, which is for 3D shootings. You know, it's not heavy, but it's certainly not light. I tried shooting different arrows, different lighter spines. I can't get anything. To fly right that's why I have to shoot a plunger uh, and that's one another reasons I have my own range because a lot of tournaments we go to won't let you shoot a plunger for some reason uh, they don't want you to tune your arrow I guess and um, uh, but it, I can come out here shoot whatever I want from whatever yardages sometimes we come out and shoot for score sometimes we just come out and screw around and uh, uh, it, it's very very uh, enjoyable and uh, if you want it to be it can be excellent practice wearing orange because it's hunting season still and it's least requirement to wear orange during the gun season so
This is a pronghorn. I think we've got horns on it from a um, some kind of African animal. Again, something that some club was discarding. We got our hands on it. So. You can see the skin on this one that where I've smoothed it. It may really makes it look better because originally it was uh, as up here, you know, it gets all weathered. I, you know, I made some horns or I mean some ears, put them on there with a piece of a wire. And but you can see this, it just it doesn't make it look as, as good as new, but it certainly covers up the weathered part and all the holes. And uh, you just don't want to put it on too thick because it'll um, uh, cause the arrow to bounce out. It's just a real thin skin when you spread it. Wolf. I'm going to take shoot the regular arrow and then uh, the light at knock again because it's a little bit further. This is about a little over 25 probably. Can't tell where it hit. Right now we'll try the light of knock. And we'll shoot it for a lot less. Almost the same spot. I shot for about 20 <laughs> on that one. And uh, amazing. <laughs> I understand how the weight in the back of the arrow will change the spine. To me, you'd think it would make a shoot left or right a little, but why it would make a shoot high is beyond me. Couldn't ask for a nicer day to shoot. This is for January is really nice. No gloves. And, okay, this is a big cat. This target is an owl that we've got mounted in a, uh, you know, one of them we've carved out of an insert, but it's uh, sitting on top of a big cedar log that I cut up. So.
It used to have a nose on it, but it's fallen off somewhere. <laughs> but it's you can tell it's just. Uh, I don't know if this was an insert or just a piece of a the back end of a deer I carved up, but it makes you know for a neat target. <laughs> you want to show the moving target? You want to go back there and I'll sure. let it roll. Okay. You know this. Uh, we can't shoot this or John can't shoot it by himself because he uh, has to be able to release the the rope and be back here to shoot, uh, be back in this position to shoot it. You can see him walking across. Uh, now you say it takes a longer rope, but there's so much foliage in between here that uh, it, it just, you can't, you can't release it without it getting caught on something. We've come up with an idea that uh, we might just uh, just uh, shoot at a target where John is. You can see him there now, and um, and uh, you shoot at the target. The target will release a the uh, the pulleys to let the target slide down, and you can uh, um, you can you can see what what it looks like now. So we haven't really come up with a way to do that yet, but uh, uh, we'd invite any ideas. Uh, but um, we've come up with some ideas, but uh, but we just haven't had a chance to do that, or John hasn't had a chance to do that yet. He's worked hard on this uh, on this course, as you can well imagine, doing most of this in uh, mid-August and. 100 degree weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a bear, uh, 22 yards, I'm guessing. Let me shoot that one again with a light at knock because mm -hmm. it's the black. I love shooting these light at knocks. I really do. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to show, it should show up good, but I'm just not pleased with how to, learning how to aim with the things. Good job. I, uh, I am going to apologize for the camera work. Uh, this is a non-working phone. Uh, it's an iPhone. It's a 7 Plus and uh, it, um, it's, I say non-working phone, phone uh, the uh, screen is messed up on it where where I can I can still take a video and capture the video but um, but uh, the screen uh, the touch sensitivity is bad on it to where right now I can't even zoom in on these targets uh, it's just all the way out but uh, and plus uh, the uh, the just the jumpiness of the of the uh, camera, uh, it's not the camera, that's me, but uh, walking through this this uh, forest here. But uh, This is another one of the rubber mat targets. I think this is like five or six layers. And as I said, there's a store not too far from here that's closing these things out and they're like a buck a piece. So it makes some targets pretty cheap. Uh, this one's oh, 23 maybe, I'm 24, I'm not sure. There's, uh, I think, six layers on this one. I just bolted them together and hung them from the stand. I bought it that one of the clubs was closing down. Let's try a long one with the lighted knock at this um, next mat down here. 
it's out there I bet it's got to be close to 28 30 yards I'm guessing Oh, I didn't use the light of knock. <laughs> we'll try it with the light of knock here and see what happens. Picked out the wrong arrow. <laughs> Must be a four layer target. Yeah, it's only four layers. Oh. Right, next is a deer. Target close. <laughs> Sounds like they're working on that road up there. Yeah. These next three targets are kind of special. Um, down this way, we got two mats, 25 and close to 28 yards or something. And way down there, that little white one, if you can see it, is um, um, about the size of a football, and it's over 40 yards. We call I kind of call this the bonus shot, but uh, it's kind of fun to fun to shoot. So. I'm going to shoot the one on the left first, Steve. Okay. Oh, that was not too good. All right, now we'll use a light and knock on the one to... Like I said, it's about the size of a football. It's a piece of foam hanging from a rope. And I'm guessing it might be over close to 45. I don't know. It's out there. <laughs> it's fun to watch that arrow go with that lighted knock.
Got another chair and another rake. Turkey target, just 21 maybe, something like that, I'm guessing. I'm going to take this time to thank John for uh, for building this course, not only for himself, but for, for those that uh, he he invites uh, out here. Uh, I've had a great time out here. I thank him every time I, I come here, because uh, it's it's just so peaceful. It's it's made so set up so nice, and uh, it's just a it's just a great time. And and uh, of course, he puts us up, and uh, and Marcia, his wife, uh, bless her. She's uh, she's such a good cook. <laughs> she's great. Usually we've got another guy with us named Jim yeah. out of Chillicothe, Ohio, uh, a.k.a. Butterfinger. Yeah. <laughs> Wish you were here, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, we miss. He's a real good guy. Good shot, too, when he when he concentrates. And, uh, but that's like all of us, I guess. Uh, this is one of the, I think, the only critter target I left on this side of the range that's not set back in the brush. I was just too tired to move it. <laughs> But, uh, right now we're shooting at it from close to 20, maybe not quite, maybe 18 or something. But again, it's just an insert or a piece of a, probably a deer target I've carved up and put a head on it. Huh. You can see John's put a lot of work in this place and, and uh, not only with setting these targets, but clearing this place out. Uh, he's, I mean, it, it may not look like it, but he's, I mean, he's cleared so much um, debris out of here to be able to uh, make these these paths, and you can see what I'm talking about there. Let's show him uh, a close-up of this. On this one, I just put big, large screws in the bottom. You can see it's part of the insert, uh, shoulder, or, I don't know, head or neck or of a deer, I just, <laughs> it's, you can see what the backside look like. And uh, mm -hmm. used to go in the tar our target this way, I think. Yeah. And then, but you know, I fill it in and patch it and you know, they're free. You know, a lot yeah. of clubs throw them away yeah. if there's any of their members don't want them. And, and Jim Massey, Butterfinger got me a lot of these. So. Yeah. yeah, Jim, Jim got him a, a, a van full of them, I think. Kind of a neat one. This is one that I think was a one of those bedded deer the whole back end because those things are so thick they make really good targets. And I tried to carve it to look like a fat beaver. I mean it should be black if it's a beaver, but <laughs> I didn't have any black paint at the moment. But this I bet I could shoot this target three or four years. So even on pieces of the the, the targets, um, you can uh, you you know you can save them. One thing I've done in the past I haven't done it here is if you get a deer target that's shot up you take you know the front half of the part with the leg and you get where the legs standing straight up and you can carve that little piece of that foot to look like a head and you put a bill on it and it looks like an ostrich and I've, I've made those before and I take big long sticks and put them in the ground with that insert on top the part that's not shot up and, and, and I've covered them with um, um, uh, feathers from vultures there's a couple you know if you know where there's tree big dead trees where the vultures hang out all the time I go up under there with gloves on of course and gather up those uh, feathers 
and you can put cover them with feathers and they look real as they can be and, and they're fairly big big targets and, uh, when we first started shooting I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video or not we started off shooting at uh, paper targets and um, uh, tape to uh, hay bales and then we put them on excelsior bales and, uh, and this is going back in the 60s I guess and then um, uh, the really neat thing started and I guess it was in the early 70s a club out St. Louis when I lived up there they um, had some guys with a lot of talent and they started making hand built targets out of uh, the new thing then was ethafoam and they were carving them into animals and like that last turkey we shot at they made uh, uh, strutting turkeys but they put real turkey feathers on the tail and um, they made deer targets and they used uh, in some cases put actual deer feed on them the, from their deer that they've shot they've hunted and real uh, tails off the deer they put them on the back of the deer they've they've hand carved out and then real deer antlers and I'm telling you when when that star when the first time we saw that 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 really got me hooked on shooting 3d tournaments not necessarily shoot for score back then I just trying to hit the target but then they uh, McKenzie came out with uh, the first you know the ethophone professionally made target and those things were just heaven for us and uh, it's been uphill ever since just to keep right on shooting it gets very addictive and, uh, okay let's shoot the beaver Deer. We got a deer target up here. This is the last target on on this side of the course. And uh, or no, wait, there's two more. I forgot that we got the bag target there. The, but, uh, this deer is probably a hair over 20. And you can see how thick this target is and you can shoot it from all four sides and uh, and it's just uh, I'm pretty sure it's just the back end of the bed of deer you know and then um, that's carved into it the head and it will put the little ears and eyes on it but, uh, but that that target as thick as it is will last a long long time and basically it's free I mean it's you paint it something somebody's throwing away Got a bag target of about 20 and then a oops, oops, foam target out there, 28 or whatever. I apologize again, I can't zoom in on these two, but you'll hear them. No, I told you you'd hear Use that. the lighted knock on this one. Okay. I really like shooting these lighted knocks, they're really fun. It's like shooting a tracer bullet or a flaming arrow. <laughs> Shoot a lot of flaming arrows, do you? Well, no, but I'd like to. <laughs> That's bad shot. Last shot. A little bit low. Right here's one mm -hmm. one of the problems with this course <laughs> when they planted these trees there's a lot of dying you got to be careful <laughs> look at this one here see if it the size of it and i'm not that i'm 70 years old i'm not uh they just fall they're dead mm. and uh frequently when i come out one of the first things i do is walk the course and move dead trees out of the middle of the trail. But. <laughs> well, we end the course with two low shots. <laughs> 
this is a target I got from uh, when he was shutting down the Howard Hill event. Terry Harris was getting rid of a lot of his targets, and this one had a, an insert missing foam, and I filled it with the expanding foam and painted it. He sold it to me pretty cheap, and it's working out very well. This is the one a deer attacked, and um, uh, they knocked it completely over, and knocked the head off of it. And I've got I had big screws in it to hold it together, and it hit it so hard and knocked the knocked the uh, screws out of it. And, uh, but they haven't attacked in the last couple of weeks, so I guess the rut's about over. <laughs> If we come back the next time, like the next time we shoot, we start here and shoot from the yellow stakes and shoot at this side of the deer and this side of the beaver and, and work our way and come back out the way we started this time. But uh, nice place, Sherwood Forest, Central Alabama. Um, if uh, uh, you want to shoot, try to contact us. They're working on that road right there or something. <laughs> but, uh, anyhow. Um, Beautiful day. Appreciate you watching the video and uh, sh share it with all you want. Thank you very much. What the heck are they doing there? I think I'll have to cut the end of it off because. Uh... Oh, he's got his tractor out there. That's what he's doing. Huh. I can't get the damn thing to stop. <laughs>